Hi, dear Kalio students. I'm so excited, so happy to be with you on this topic of gender and other transversal issues. Why? Because they are actually the core of what we do. How come can we feel accountable towards our communities and our donors if we're not looking at the community in, in its wholeness? If we're not looking at a context with all its different dynamics, how can we really say that we're addressing the needs if we have only assessed the needs of part of the population? So it's really essential to change these specs because that's what is gender and transversal issues about, is only about changing specs. Let me tell you a little story of, oof, more than 20 years back, yeah, much more, <laughs> 1997. It's my first mission in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I, so my first time in humanitarian aid, and I remember these meetings um, for eco projects, eco funded projects, coordination, eco being the, um, at this time it was only an office, and now it's a directorate general of the European Union on humanitarian aid. And um, in this meeting, so you have the different NGOs interacting, and I will remember all my life, this first session I attended, and you had all these big people in this head of mission with experience in humanitarian aid and, and saying that they should not be in the hygiene kit. There was this big heated discussions um, about should the hygiene kit include menstruation pads and there would be some of the NGOs and especially I would have to say in here they had actually a key role in gender and other transversal issues is the Anglo-Saxon NGOs like I remember Oxfam, International Rescue Committee, uh, yeah I remember these were the two more vocals on yes we did menstruation pads, yes we did and then there were other organizations saying, no, 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 it's more important to have a shaving kits for the men to shave. I mean, it was just crazy. And this kind of discussions, so nowadays we can say, why, why so many discussions about everything? Because even the humanitarian aid world has changed so much, has professionalized so much. And we are not, we have many tools on how to integrate all these strategies, these considerations. But as you rightly mentioned, some of you on the forums, uh, yeah, many times is blah, 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 blah. I worked many years actually after that with ECHO and I've received many proposals. <laughs> and you can tell someone it's just blah, blah, blah. And sometimes it's just really concrete action. So my invitation, I remember one of the first NGO in being really um, avant-gardiste uh, on, on, on those and, and, treat and, and dealing with gender in a very practical way has been Oxfam. And um, I was working with Oxfam, so the same, uh, many years back. I remember starting in, 90, in 2000, actually. Yeah, exactly 20 years back. And they had developed these gender standards in humanitarian aid. Really, I don't know if some of you of um, this old generation in listen to me or have seen these green cards of Oxfam. And um, they were giving some really basic um, consideration and questions to ask oneself uh, to integrate gender. Then I remember with my team in the field in Colombia, we took these standards and we just explore what they were meaning, which impact we could have with these basic questions, such as understanding what are the dynam gender dynamics in the communities. Are they women? Are they men? What are the different profiles? How do they interact? Who make the money decisions in the household? Who make the decisions on what in the household, in the community? How does all that work? So first I would say it's a lot of curiosity of embracing the whole spectrum of the community. Okay, so here I'm focusing on gender. In the next video we'll see on how these other transversal issues also um, are essential. And it's just a matter of asking some questions and not making assumptions. 
oh, it's a woman, or it's a man, or this or that. And I give you concrete examples. And I've seen some of you sharing that in the forums. So it's, it's very important you continue bringing up your specific examples of successes, but also your questions on how to integrate this and that in your project and also your failures. And let me tell you um, a number of learnings we had. Example, we had this hygiene promotion campaign. So here I'm talking about 20 years back. And, um, but still, you know, you, you, I can see also from your interaction, I can see when I go to the field, these kind of examples you still have because it seems it takes a lot of time for us to ask the right question. We prefer sometimes to go quicker. And I've worked always at that time, I'm telling you, um, I was, working in primary emergency so there's time in primary emergency to add these questions then when you implement the project you start experiencing observing and learning your lessons in adjusting what needs to be adjusted so that you make sure that women and men will benefit from your project and that they will the, you, you will really reach the impact you're looking for without being blind on any one situation. So an example, we had this uh, hygiene promotion projects and um, we were really excited that um, women and children were participating very actively. There were very few men. Um, but well, you know, we said, oh, okay, who is really influencing and um, on the children? For, so they washed their hands, for example, etc. So th this this is this was more in the context of this uh, society twenty years back. It was more a uh, uh, woman responsibility at home. So we said, oh, so excited, and then we start monitoring month after month, and no change in terms of the hands washing, for example say how come and in terms of the um, morbidity you know the the diarrhea and, and all these um, diseases that are associated with the hands washing or the lack of hands washing and we say how come what's happening and then so using these simple questions of what are the dynamics who actually was take, making the decisions on the use of money in the household was the men and the men were not participating to this um, this pr hygiene promotion sessions because they were working or because they, they didn't feel they were the target audience because maybe we didn't reach out to them properly blah 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 etc a number of reasons proof no issue what do we want we want an impact on the morbidity um, in the hygiene of the families okay men need to assist and at the same time so we maybe need to review, that's what we did, review the timing of the session. Aye, but when the men can assist, women cannot. Okay, so make two sessions available. Then in your promotion, in your advocacy, and in your connection with the families and with the communities, start exploring how men and women would gain in, in, in deciding together on the use of financial resources at home because they have different knowledge and different needs. Then also discuss with the communities how these big topics, the topics that are important, could could be shared as a community matter, etc., etc. A lot of things. These discussions with women also that they 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 can dare sharing their knowledge with the husband. Another thing, you know, we had male monitors, and I I know that it's been a question I think in the English forum actually. Oh, I think my neighbor has started to, <laughs> to do some housework. <laughs> if it becomes really big, then I will stop the video. So um, what's happening? The, um, the women, we had male monitors and female monitors. And, but of course, the male monitors would go to the house and many times the woman is alone in the house. And, um, and then we would register the woman as head of household because she's the one who we are dealing with. She's the one who is present. And we, we thought also it was kind of an empowering thing no? to, to recognize them. What has happened? Some men has, have started to complain. How come a man comes to visit my house, my family and my wife while I'm out, a man that I don't know? And how come she's the head of household on the list? What about me? Um, I should be the head of household. So here, we what what's happening? 
here there's a lack of also dialogue and engagement with the men and we put women at risk of gender violence okay so poof immediately yes we reconsider that engaging dialoguing discussing so understanding better this dynamic so here little examples of course customized to your need but it's principally asking the questions what how why discussing with people speak with women speak with men if you if your project is about engaging more women and increasing their participation speak with them and yes often it needs to be without the men because you're not going to say the same thing okay even myself can feel very empowered <laughs> everything it's just it's not the same level of of um of intimacy of privacy of connection if you you have to speak about relationship between men and women and you're speaking to a man in or you're surrounded with men it's not the same so so just think about these little things and sometimes in the community is actually again on this same project at the end, the closure of the project on income generating packages, we had gathered men, women, the whole families together and they shared how the project had supported because we were very active in, in ensuring that decision making started to be um, a joint work and that both men and women would enjoy that would enjoy the support that it creates to feel that the woman is also giving her her opinion and supporting her man and that the the man feels supported by her husband um, because um, in her income generating activity if she was the one um, leading on on the um, the project or if if uh, she was supporting her husband and um, generating the income that her role is valued and is necessary for the whole family to flourish and also in the context of displacement caused by conflict how this could um, also help to bind, um, bind um, create a bond again within the family okay so at the end of the program we would gather the families and we would have the men speaking and being proud of how they've involved their wives and we would have the wives daring to speak also in with the same confidence saying hey how, how this has shifted and how she felt empowered also and how she did taking this space so this this can be a lot of success stories and uh, just have this curiosity observation and honesty okay honesty the days we want to take the fast track and go a little quicker and just fulfill the donors and report form and everything let's reconnect again with our why why are we doing what we are doing what is my commitment towards these communities thank you today we going with environment starting to dive into environment exacting exciting moments please do ask all your questions on the forum first it nourishes the forum it I, I everybody learns from your questions and from the answers also everybody gets the opportunity to contribute because the answers is not just me it's please you first and the the thing is if, if you send me on a personal message, I, I may not see it or I may not reply because I'm focusing my attention on the forum, being with you, connecting with you, addressing your questions and maybe challenging you for some questions also. Thank you so much for being part of this module. Thank you for your engagement, your enthusiasm and your commitment to saving and protecting lives.